Dragon Ball Super on a budget episode three. So um, this is uh, red cards um, that are relatively cheap, worth getting uh, your hands on for when you're, you know, when you want to build decks. Um, uh, okay, so the theory, the, the game concept is the idea that um, these are the kind of cards that are worth having because you can use them for multiple builds. You can use them and you can build a whole bunch of different decks using these cards. A lot of these cards you know, can be tech cards, they can be main, you know, staples, like cards that like you definitely need them in order to, to, to play a certain deck or strategy. So it's very important to to have them. And a lot of these cards are relatively cheap. I just bought a play set of Ultimate Gohans before making this video just to be safe <laughs> since I do want the card and I want to make sure I ordered it before I put this video out just in case. Um, Cause I know some cards that I wanted to get suddenly started going up in price. I did just get my play set of uh, well, three copies of my Super Saiyan Kaioken Goku today. So that's good. I got those. I got three copies of my either three or four copies. Maybe maybe it's four because maybe two of them are in the same pack. So I think I got all four of my uh, Piccolo Junior Unison. Um, so I got those. So the only thing left would be um, Violent Rays. I'll work on that later on. In the meantime, I will be using is that all you got and you know for for now as my substitute for violent rays but pretty much i got everything else in here since i did order this i got these these this this obviously i got all these cards No, I don't have Lord Slugs, but if I'm right, I ordered them two days ago, so they will be on their way. I just ordered these and all the other colors of these um, free negates that makes blocker tokens. So these are the future of of Dragon Ball when it comes to negating. Of course, I got my Nappas. So these are. You know, my go-to cards for when I'm building decks. All right, my order for my Gohan has just been confirmed. Cool. All right, so um, these are like my go-to cards for um, red. Obviously, there's other cards. It's just these are like the just some of them just to show case the idea of like how important it is to have these in general, just in case you need them. It's a good idea to have them. You know what I mean? Gohan himself is is a is a win con. If you if you use them right, Gotenks is a one card win con. You know, he he does have uh, specified three red to use, but that shouldn't be that much of a problem in a mono red deck or a red blue deck or red green deck. Um, the fact that he makes tokens and he gets and him and the tokens get double strike, so that's Potential eight damage right there by itself. That's why it's a win a one card win con, right? So cards like these are important to have because you never know when they might be useful. You could easily put this in a Bulma deck, you know, because it wouldn't be that hard to get five to five turn five or six or seven or eight with a Bulma deck, right? So this is worth playing because it helps you go wide. Um, so that's you know I've used this a lot and has won me a lot of duels. So definitely vouch for that. So it's a good card to have. Gohan, same thing. The fact that when you, it KOs a battle card by battle, it inflicts two damage to your opponent. So you don't have to focus on attacking your opponent's leader. Which you gotta remember it has a base power of fifteen on average. I mean someday we might have leaders whose base power is twenty K. Or if let's say you attack your opponent's leader and they send Zubin or something, right? So now their leader would be 20k plus whatever they combo from the hand, which might be super combos among other things. So it'd probably, you know, be, be pretty hard for 
a you know 25k double striker to get his attack to go through attacking the leader but if you if you attack your opponent's battle card instead and it's a 5k or let's say it's a 4k or a 1k battle card you have a higher chance of KOing the battle card and triggering this effect for game because your opponent might not have enough to combo to the point where they can out combo this attack because they don't have a high base you know they don't have 15k to work from right like how they would with the leader you know they, they're literally working with something that has 5k or 4k or 1k power you know what i mean um i mean if you're in a fortune scenario where your opponent has a battle card with with 500 power you know like the king um the king vegeta deck you know, it has the field card, the young invaders. It could put a little 500 um, power battle card on your opponent's side of the field. So you can take advantage of that, right? Give them that and then use this to attack it. It's going to be hard to, you know, combo to protect that card. Um, the fact that this needs to KO battle card to get the burn right, um, blockers will be pointless, right? Because you're trying to KO a battle card anyway. So you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about blockers so with this card you don't have to worry about blockers because you're trying to ko a battle card anyway so you want them to block the blocker right most blockers tend to be weak anyway like a thousand um, i mean 10k power or less so that already gives you the advantage and then the only he doesn't have deflect he doesn't have bear so he's a you know he's he's you know vulnerable to you know you know counter plays and and um cards the ko battle cards right so he still has that um you know that drawback right he doesn't have the fleck he doesn't have bear fair enough right but at least you don't have to worry about the whole um blocker thing you still have to worry about negate so remember the four things you gotta overcome when it comes to um you know going for game right is you gotta overcome blockers negates so, uh your point out comboing and cards that can ko on your turn you know these are like the four main factors you gotta deal with so this can only really stop one thing um technically two um which is the block uh, the, the the blocker scenario because you don't care if your opponent blocks you want you want them to block and then so that's one thing you don't have to worry about and then there's the combo thing because one you're going to be attacking something that's already really really weak so that already mathematically increases your uh, you know your combo power as it were because in order for your opponent if you attack something that has 5k power for example your opponent has to combo first off 20k just to match go go on just to match so they need 20 combo power just to match go on so that's like two super combos right there just to match go on then they have to go past you know right to out combo gohan and they have to start throwing in 5ks you know more super combos that kind of stuff right so if you attack with this to a 5k right and you throw in let's say two super combos right you're already at 45k your opponent is going to need um two super combos just to match your power but then they're going to need two more super combos right um, you know, to your base power to even to just to match to the fact that you're at 45k then they'll need a 5 5k extra right to to out combo you so they're going to need 40 combo power plus the five so they're going to need 45 obviously they're going to need 45 combo power essentially four super combos and a 5k right just to stop the fact that you attack with this to a battle card that's 5k power or a blocker that's 5k power and you just use two super combos or two 10ks however you want to look at it you, you know your, your chances are pretty high and if you go beyond that if you combo even more than the you know two super combos right then it's drastically reducing the the your opponent's ability to um out combo the this attack especially if you've been doing stuff like you've been doing crit damage 
like you've been critting your opponent the whole time to you know get them down to two life and make sure they didn't add six cards to their hands right that by doing stuff like that that great, greatly increases your ability for this to win you the game by attacking a battle card that's preferably 500k you know 500k or 5k right and then you know dump your hand into the attack you know and be able to pretty much guarantee the KO, which should give you the um, ability to um, you know, win the game right there and then. Another thing I like uh, looking into is being able to give uh, Gohan dual attack, the ability to make him you know, be able to attack more than once. Definitely looking into that, because that would be very useful. Um, because, you know, what they say when you first you don't succeed try try again right so if i try i try to take my opponent down you know and they manage to out combo right and survive it's like damn didn't kill the battle card that's unfortunate all right restand them attack again and try again and more likely on the second second try right you should win right it should it should pan out so that's a thing all right, moving on, enough of the mighty Gohan. <laughs> uh, of course, we can talk about uh, um, Gotenks. He's a, he's a one-card win con. There's not much to really say about him. Um, you should have him in your collection of cards to build decks with. Um, board wipes, anything that's a board wipe, you know, you should look into. Right now, we got uh, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku. He has the ability to ignore barrier in minus 25k something that's nice so there's some barrier hate um in it in this card as well as it has you know deflect plus the board wipe ability of 20k power or less by playing it from your hand this card's currently not cheap obviously but the thing about you know budget is not always about paying like a dollar or two per card um, a lot of time it's just about um getting the most the most for your money you know right so if you're gonna, so let's say, well, these are like roughly a hundred now. If you were to spend four hundred dollars, right, to get a a, a full playset of this, for now, just one would be enough. It's at the level of an SCR right now. But um, you know, if you were to, you know, pay four hundred to get a playset of this, well, you know, this will always be good, especially in a red deck just as a basic tech card you know even even without using its active main just use it as a deflect you know board wipe you know for two specified red you can splash this in, in any deck you know what i mean <sighs> obviously this card is really good in bulma this card is good in just in any mono red in any red leader deck uh, this card is you know um you know red blue deck you know like you could you know main deck a side deck this in the Volker. it's really good it's a board wipe, you know, might not be, um, there are some other options that are cheaper. It's just that this is a really good one for its low cost, but there are some higher, um, energy cost ones. Um, I bought a play set of a five drop one. Then there's a Vegeta five drop that he could be cheaper. I think you can, he, he costs three to play on your opponent's turn and he, you know, he does some counterplay stuff. So there's some other, um, options you should definitely look into. But for what you know, this does and being low cost, it makes you know low cost energy wise, you know it makes it obviously a really good card to have. Um, right now, of course, it's very pricey. I remember when it used to be um, twenty five bucks when I initially wanted it, but I took too long to get my hands on them, and now you pay the price, right? Which is what I'm letting you know about. You know, try to get stuff sooner than later. Um, any anytime you see something that says choose all your points about cards and KO them, you know, definitely scoop them up even if you don't think you're gonna ever really use them. If they're cheap, they're like quarters, dollars, you know, five dollars, scoop them up because you never know, you never know, right? And I know well enough in card games that things like that do tend to be important later on. Um, or wipes just makes the game easier. That's another thing. Always remember that you're always trying to make the game easier for yourself but harder for your opponent and sometimes something just has to be simple you don't need something complicated with like like an encyclopedia worth of text on the card right just something as simple as 
to lose all your points battle cards and KO them. That's all you really need. Now, ignoring barrier, that's an extra lovely icing on the cake, right? That we like to see. But just saying, you know, KO your points battle cards is more than enough for you to, you know, want to grab the card and make sure you have access to it. And currently, almost every color has that. Um, really interesting thing to see is both barrier and deflect on a card. We know how powerful that makes a card. Having both barrier and double strike. I mean, um, barrier and deflect. So any any card that has barrier and deflect is definitely something you should look really closely at. This happens to have double strike and it's 20k, so good base power to start off with. It has the ability that if your leader card is red, your opponent can't um, activate blocker skills in response to this card's attack, which is really nice. Obviously, this is useful against Boma deck. Um, good against just any deck in general, because now, remember, this is uh, immune to, um, you know, counterplays and, you know, active battle or card effects that can KO battle cards on your turn, right? Has barriers, so it's immune to cards that would either try to steal your card during your turn or KO your card during your turn, so that barrier comes in handy, the deflect comes in handy against counterplays. And then, of course, it's double strike, so it can help you, you know, finish off a game. And it bypasses blocker if your leader is, you know, red, of course. So that right there is already taking care of the whole, um, you know, um, blocker things being played. Um, it, you know, this card getting um, stopped or dealt with on your turn. You know, that it bypasses those two things. And then it has the secondary auto where. Add one card from your life to your hand. When this card's attack is negated, deal one damage to your opponent. So it has essentially the uh, ability to kind of bypass negate per, per se. Because if your opponent does negate this card's attack, which is you know, something you don't want to happen, right? At least they'll take damage regardless, right? They'll still take at least one damage for doing so. What's extra nice is that if they use a sparking negate, for example, they end up losing anyway. Right, <laughs> they end up killing themselves because they'll take a life for the spark in the gate, and then this will trigger because this this attack was negated, and your opponent loses another life, so they just lost two life just for negating this card's attack. So it's you know it's you know double edged sword. They damn if they do, damn if they don't, right? So definitely a really good card to get, and it's really cheap. It should be like about a dollar a copy. So definitely should have just to have. It's a good card, especially if you have a red leader. Champa, he's a pink Kai. He's a generic. You can play him in any deck. You know, doesn't matter the color of your deck and whatnot, because you're you're mainly using them to combo and get the double strike. So you can essentially turn anything into a finisher, a leader into a finisher, a unison into a finisher, a battle a battle card into a finisher. You know, what I mean, you can turn anything into a final kill shot, right? So that's what's important. Um, so definitely should have them. You never know when you might put both in the same deck, or you know, choosing between this one or this one. They have their they have their merits. Uh, Bodyguard Logic is a fifteen k blocker. You can play for free, so you could definitely put it in any deck. Um, that you're playing, so it's always good to have this, you know, better to have and not need than to need and not have, right? It's been a definitely, him and me have won many of battles. <laughs> he has put in a lot of work. Um, I wish he was an alien. alien. If he had the alien trait, that would be nice. But for some reason, he has a bodyguard trait. Like, why is he his special trait bodyguard? Why is an alien? <laughs> Um, oh well, but um, again, you know, fifteen k body, you know, as a blocker is always good. Most blockers tend to be weaker, tend to be ten k or five k, or a weaker than that. Um, so being fifteen k blocker is always good. Um, so you can definitely keep them, keep them on the field a little bit longer, um, just by comboing five k with them. The other thing is the fact that you know. He's 15k, so you can definitely go um, very aggro with him, combine him with Isa Pain Kai or Champa, and you got a 25k double strike. 
for one energy essentially right since you'll be playing him for free so definitely a good card to have inherently and they're cheap right now of course lower slug giant force a 15k crit you know any 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 time you have crit it's always good so this is a pretty good card um mainly because base 15 which is decent crit I prefer 20k and above, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? So 15k crit as a plus one ability that lets you discard a card from your hand, choose one of your opponent's battle cards to ignore a barrier and minus 10k from it. This, uh, the ignore barrier is nice. Um, just being able to KO something, I mean, minus 10k from something, um, to make something weaker and easier, you know, KO is always good, or just being able to remove problematic card like a blocker or something so this is a really good card just because it has that little basic effect but the main use for him other than having you know having crit and that uh, plus one effect is this minus four ability if your leader card is red when your opponent activates a counter skill deal one damage to your opponent so that alone can put your opponent in a tough situation because counter attacks are counter skills obviously as well as counter plays so if you have this in in, in play already with uh with uh four markers on it if you if you attack with anything your opponent plays a counter attack you could just burn them you know what i mean um something funny you could do right is attack with this if your opponent plays a counter attack to negate this card's attack then you just trigger the active main i mean the auto right minus four and bang burn them dealing one damage anyway so they so they wasted a negate on him and they lost life anyway. So that was all of a waste. And now you swing with your leader, swing with whatever else you got, right? And go for game. So that's always good. Um, so that's nice to have have that little um, trap, uh, if you want to call it that, little trap. So definitely a good card to have. Um, King Piccolo, Giant Force, critical dual attack. Nice that he has crit, right? Dual attack is always good because if if, for, if first you don't succeed, try try again, right? So being able to attack more than once is very helpful because that means your opponent has to negate twice or block twice or negate and block or out combo twice, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's always good to put your opponent in a position where they have to do something more than once. And if they can only do it once, well, they they have some trouble. Um, he has a minus two ability, which lets you choose your red leader and give it the uh, plus five k power and, uh, until the start of your next turn. So you know, built-in um, defense. I mean, um, uh, sounds of being like ability is nice to have. So that, on top of the fact that he's a you know, dual attack, is always good. So that should be offensive and defensive off just one card, and he has a built-in win con if you can. <laughs> achieve it right um is if you have a red leader and you minus four markers from this card pay for red two of any um x um of any en um, energy and you do x damage so you know typically the most you most you will need to do with this card will be you know two so that would that, that would be a total of 10 energy in order to play this card all in one turn four to play him four for the red and two for the burn damage right for the x part so four four two that's eight that's ten but if you can do if you can set it up where you can do uh, four to play him then untap two so that way you'd be at six and then do four and two you know so he's really good with uh, red leaders that untap two energies so that way you can you know Make it where you don't need ten to do this. Um, you know, to do two damage with this card, you only need eight energy to do two damage with this card. But you gotta get to turn eight, right? So that's not always easy, but not impossible. Then we got Sin Shen Wang Units of Calamity. Really good card. Has three. It's just good, right? It's it's a twenty k buying, so that that's that's something going for it. It's a three drop. Um, has a permit where it makes it itself plus all your battle cards and leader cards that are red capable of attacking points active mode um, battle cards which is always useful 
especially you know if you if you you know has synergized with Gohan, which is always nice. Then there's the plus one ability, which is nice that it's plus one, not a minus one. It would have made sense to be a minus one. We can understand if it was a minus one, but they st instead they decided to give to make it a plus one, which is busted. Plus one ability, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, and they get a negative fifteen k power for the turn. So that's busted to have the ability to essentially weaken two battle cards, which could potentially KO them, and it's a plus one instead of a minus one. But hey, bigger, I'm not gonna complain. I'm a fan, so yay, plusing. So it's already a 20k unit, so it's going to be hard for your opponent to attack it and remove markers from it. Then you're plusing when you use it to you know, KO things, right? Or weaken things. So it's just so good, so good. And then it has the minus 2 ability, right? Got to minus something at some point, right? Minus 2, look at your opponent's hand. Choose a better card with a 25k power or less and discard it. So that's already busted. Look at your opponent's hand. Knowing you know what they do have in their hand, whether they have negates or not, whether they have a threat, you know, even though if you can't get rid of, if you can't get rid of the threat, at least you know it's there. So, you know, it's a powerful effect to have. This definitely makes the game easier for you because you know the fact that you can always. Make sure you can um, attack battle cards that you need to get rid of. The fact that you can always weaken battle cards to make it easier to get rid of them or just get rid of them just to those effect alone. And the ability to look at your opponent's hand at any given time so that way you can you know, make plans and make decisions, know when it's the best time to go for game, when it's not the best time to go for game. You know, that, you know, that way it makes the game easier for yourself. You don't have to think or guess. You know, that's the thing. It's good to have skill, you know, it's good to be good at the game, you know, to really, really, you know, master the game. But if you can, you know, shortcut, right? If you can just be like, all right, let me look at your hand, make my life easier. Okay, you got nothing. I'm going for game. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff matters. Because if your opponent has a 30 card hand, it's going to feel like you can't win. But if you can look at the hand and be like, oh, okay, you only got like, at most 20, maybe 25 worth of combo power in your hand right now that you can actually use. And I know I got like 30 plus a combo power in my hand I can use. Yeah, I'm going for game. You know what I mean? Like, that's very important. Like, because, like I said, think about it. If you have like a six card hand, you've only got a 30 card hand, it's easy to think, like, oh, well, I can't go for game. Uh, my opponent can easily out combo my attack. But if you could look at the hand and confirm that they can or can't, that matters. And if you see that they can't, well, then you got game, right? That's important. Most people would scoop, like, at a point like that, like, damn, he has too many cards in his hand. No way I can, I can out combo him or her, right? Oh, scoop, end the game. I've been in scenarios where some people, um, over, um, overestimated my hand, where they assumed that, you know, I had the ability to, um, out combo their attack. I'm like, oh no. You got this. <laughs> I got nothing in my hand. I got, I got, I got, I got extra cards and unisons and 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 battle cards that 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 are 10k, but they you know require an energy, so I can't use them. So you got this. But you know because they didn't know that my hand wasn't um, you know good for comboing, um, they weren't sure if they couldn't go for game or not. But you know. Because there was a scenario where somebody thought that I uh, I could combo out um, of, of their attacks, and they didn't attack. So I got an extra free turn just because they thought I could combo out. If they knew <laughs> that my hand wasn't <laughs> wasn't capable of stopping their attacks, they, they could have just won right there and then. So the extra turn, you know, made a difference. So that's funny. But that's the importance, right, you know? Of, of the Calamity. Calamity makes the game easier for you. Then we got Piccolo Jr., Descendant of the King. Um, for me, the main thing that I care about when it comes to this card is that it has a plus one draw ability because I do have a cheaper, um, well, cheaper as in like cheaper for buying the card, right? 
because this car wasn't you know that cheap um, wasn't that expensive but at the same time wasn't that cheap um, um unison where you know plus zero i draw a card the thing is is that it's plus zero which means i'm not gaining markers which means it, it wouldn't take that much to ko the battle card i mean the unison right to get rid of it so from me using it me play testing that um that one that old unison uh, i typically only got one draw out of it and then my opponent you know got rid of it like with a double strike or something it's like yeah if i had a if it was a plus one draw instead of a plus zero draw that would have made a difference then it would stick on the field a little longer so that's why it's awesome that this one has a plus one to draw this one's better in that regards the added thing is this has an auto a floodgate auto it's not even a once per turn it just keeps on working as long as your opponent keeps on playing counter skills so as the auto when your opponent activates a counter skill whether it be a counter attack count which are most common right counter play secondarily most common and then counter counter right so if they use any of those three counter skills you can choose one of your opponents uh, battle cards with 15k power or less in ko which is nice you know free you know um battle card removal right just for your opponent your opponent makes the play right so your opponent does something and it backfires right just costs so there's a cost for countering your attacks right and that's always good so i like the fact that it has that built-in ability uh, but the main reason i i care for the card is the plus one because it allows me to give um any any deck that uh that might not have draw power draw power right uh, draw engine so i play it put this on board i get to draw plus it um you know it's 15k so essentially it's like having a leader a leader that draws basically it's like i can put a leader that draws into a deck that the leader doesn't draw let's say the leader searches or the leader mills or something and it's like all right well i still need to draw right i want to keep my hands you know um i want to be able to refill my hands right every every turn so this is a really good card for that because you know the plus one will let it stick on the field longer like a leader, you know, stays on the field throughout the game, right? So it sticks on the field longer, and you know, you're able to replenish your hands. Like this is a really good card, obviously, you know, for my X combo Gohan deck, my Gohan burn deck, because I do run out of gas really fast in that deck. You know, I run out of hands. I literally wasn't um, at the K one um, K tournament. I literally had no cards in my hands, <laughs> and it was still funny that my opponent asked me how many cards I got in my hands. Like I got none. <laughs> I got no cards. I used I used everything, and and if I had this unison, it would have made a difference. I would have been able to um, replenish my hand with this with this card. Um, plus, have a 15k by on board. You know, something I can keep swinging every turn with, right? Uh, on top of my leader. So having two attacks, uh, I can rely on every turn plus the ability to draw to re um, refill my hands. You know, very important. So this definitely would have made a difference, and it does have a a uh, third, uh, third ability which is really good um you know board wipe has a built-in board wipe so can't go wrong with any card that has board wipe ability right so this has a floodgate effect board wipe and draw for two red energy right two red energy to play it it's too good not to right and it has rejuvenate the the, the you get the rejuvenate effect so you get to gain life this card is too good and it's still cheap enough that you can go Grab it before it, you know, becomes a hundred dollar card, <laughs> like how this one went, right? So definitely grab this as soon as possible. The other ones, you know, should still be relatively cheap for a long while, but definitely gotta grab this bad boy. Even if you don't use them as much, it's better to have and not need than to need and not have, right? And we have these counter attacks. Um, I guess what would we be calling them? Um, counter blockers not negates um they're all the essentially free negates uh that's for sure um so this is for uh, mono red leaders uh, if i'm right all the other ones are for mono yellow mono green and mono blue there's no well they should make a mono black that would make sense um but i haven't seen one yet but it makes sense that they made a mono black one 
I mean, it would definitely be busted if they made a model black one. I would definitely want a model black one for my Hatchy Hat deck, but that's for a different conversation. Counter attack. If your leader card is mono red, negate the attack, which is nice. A hard negate. Then play one Cyberman token. Um, the token gains blocker for the turn. So that's an extra potential, um, to, um, you know, defense. So you can stop two attacks just off of this one card. And then it has the permit if your life is five or less, which is interesting. That means you can use the early game. Um, you can activate this card's counter skill for, from your hand by adding one card from your life to your hand instead of paying its energy cost. Right. So, you know, that's badass. Um, so pretty much it, it's sparking the gate without sparking, right? It's like, it's just too good. And then they're common, so they're easy to get. I already scooped up all mines prior to this video, so I already scooped up all mines. I definitely want to make sure I have them. It's better to have and not need than to need and not have. And despite that I'm a fan of these cards, I do hate the fact that they, they exist because now it, uh, attacking for game is going to be a lot harder, right? Because... You know, we always we, um, we're always trying to overcome negates and blockers. Now you literally have negate uh, a negate that creates a blocker. So you so it's like so this is great against uh, you know cards that have dual attack because you negate the first attack, create the token, write the blocker, and then if they attack again, then block the second attack. So this is a decent card um, against Selzano, right? To block the first attack, and then when he attacks again, block. Yeah, I mean, negate the first attack, then block the second attack with the token, right? And so this is a one card that can, you know, draw, uh, stop a Sozeno play, for example. Which sounds great! <laughs> if you're not a Sozeno player, right? Or a player that plays stuff that can attack more than once, or, you know, just in general. Because then about the disrespect <laughs> of being able to play this. And then the fact that this plays for free, so you have five or less life. Like... You know, right? Darn it, five or less. Um, you can you can essentially play this for free. And then the fact that when you have five life and you use this to take a life, right? You're not even dropping the card. You're adding the card to your hand. That's a plus. That's a that's a benefit, right? Um, that's not a neg. That's a plus. So you're plusing and you're potentially stopping two attacks. These are um, a pseudo. Uh, baby hatchy axe. That's what these are. So of course I'm a fan. <laughs> right? These could potentially earn you an extra turn under the right conditions. Oh my god, these cards are just too good. And these, and th this one right here is especially adorable. Cause look at them. They're babies. Little Cybermen's. Little babies. <laughs> um. So yeah. And then Nepa. Super Saiyan Nepa. And any card that can you play, burn your opponent is always good, regardless of what color it is. You know, obviously this is you play this, burn your opponent, but you gotta play mono red, so it's very specific. Um, which means you know your your leader gotta be red, your battle cards gotta be red, your energy gotta be red. But you know if you're playing mono red, it's not wrong. Then just Throw four of these bad boys in your deck, and you know you're good to go because it greatly increases your chances of going going for game, right? Especially let's say you're in a scenario where your opponent has this, and they only have two life, right? And then you're like, all right, going in for game, and then they're like, nope, I play this by taking a life, aka play this for free, negate your attack, make a blocker token for the next attack. Potential attack you might come at me and I'm like Really? All right. Well since now you're down to one life bang drop this and finish you off so So these are gonna be a problem because they're gonna make attack winning through attacks harder right, but they're gonna make winning through burn easier so Yay, right? We'll, we'll work on that. So this is why a lot of the cards here burn. So this burns, this burns, this burns, uh, this burns, uh, this burns. So you notice a lot of the cards that I'm showing here burn. Yes, because of shit like this and, <laughs> you know, getting in the way. And, um, 
you know, it's always about trying to go past that, you know, go beyond, go beyond, beyond the game, you know. And that's what, what I do I, when I, when, you know, I, I'm, my main focus is beating the game. It's I, I could care less about, um, you know, uh, the meta or matchups or certain archetypes or certain players. None of that matters. It's the game. And when you have stuff like this being added to the game where it's like, oh, really? A free negate and it makes a blocker. So that's two attacks that can be stopped off of one card. That you're essentially playing for free yeah that's gonna be a problem and i need to find a way to bypass this problem right because ironically when i was at the 1k event i went up against the the king uh, piccolo deck i mean the other decks had similar effects but the king piccolo deck specifically was the one that reminded me like yeah in the in the upcoming uh for uh, you know um um, future and future sets we're going to be getting um these types of cards like this the, these cards specifically right that can negate an attack essentially for free so tapping out it's not a problem i always try to go for game when my opponent's tapped out and at the event i was attacking when my opponent was tapped out especially against the king piccolo player but he had this card that because he had his unison he was able to play this little piccolo junior card for free so it was a counter attack negated my attack and it put it onto the board. It put it into rest mode, but it was a blocker. That's the thing. It, it was a blocker, but it was in rest mode, so it couldn't block a secondary attack. But I didn't have an extra attack, and that at that point, so I couldn't, you know, try to still go for game, which was unfortunate. But it's the fact that he was able to stop my attack for free. That was the point. You know, if he had to pay for it, that'd be different. But of course, I made sure he was tapped out. But the point was, he was able to play for free, and that created that problem. If it wasn't for it being played for free, right? I would have just, I would have won because my attack would have went right through. He didn't have anything to stop my attack at that point. And, you know, I did have some cards in my hand, so of course I can easily out combo. My hand was still thicker than my opponent. So I had game right there, but this free negate, the free negate battle card, um, made a huge different, difference. So. So if I had if I had this, if this is what I was attacking with, it would have been a different a different story because I would have still burned them for one, right? Burn them for one damage. And and the funny thing that I do own this, and it was between playing this or playing the five drop um ape that burns when you play it. But I have to take two life and I have to get to turn five, right, to play it. And um if I had this instead, if I played this and I was debating of playing it, I should have. Definitely would have made a difference if I played this, because if I played this and swung with this, um, this that little battle card negate would have uh, caused them to lose lose a life, which would have helped me get closer to, you know, winning out the game by just doing one damage. And if he stayed on the field long enough, since he has you know the barrier, for example, um, and he does ignore blockers, so the the little thing happy blocker would have be very irrelevant i could have been able to go through and you know either burn him one more time if he negates my attack or if he um or or just get the double strike to go through and finish the game that way so anything could have happened if i had that but for now it's like it was just the idea that's like yep free negates that's gonna be a problem um so I gotta plan for it, right? You gotta be ahead of the game, plan for it. That's why cards like this, you know, I'm, I'm recommending having this because even if, you, if your opponent for free negates this card's attack, right, they still take damage. That's better than nothing. The whole goal is always to deal. That's to deal your opponent eight damage, right? That's the whole goal. That's the game. The game is to deal eight damage. Nothing else matters. Dealing eight damage. But in order to do deal eight damage, you gotta take to the fact that your opponent does have hatchyak yeah right baby hatchyak and has this now and so you know and sparking the gates and you know blockers uh unisons with blockers um you know even some leaders that might have an effect that can you know prevent battle you know uh, damage from attacks so it's making it harder to win through attacks nowadays than than it used to be so yeah, gotta find a way to bypass that that problem. 
right? And that's where burn comes in. And that's the end of this video.